I uh, had put into the chat box, uh, welcome. And this is a session focusing on the multi-actor platform approach. Um, we will have some uh, short presentations uh, about our kind of perspective on this. And then um, hopefully have some time for uh, sharing reflections and discussions. So I'm just going to um, share a screen here. So this is what we're doing here. And uh, before we get started, um, it would be lovely to get a sense of who is here. So if you could go to the polls portion of the right hand side of your screen, and hopefully you will see a poll there. And if you could tell us who you are. Of course, it's a um, closed ended question, so you can't tell us lots about who you are. But if you could just select which of those options best represents you, we will get a sense of who is in the room. So it looks as though we have uh, the majority of folks are scientists, researchers, or students. So eight of us are those. We have uh, one NGO civic organization and one policymaker EU and two others. Excellent. Uh, well, welcome. It's uh, useful to have a sense of, of who's in the room and who we're uh, going to be sharing the next hour with. So uh, let me move on to what we're hoping to do here. Uh, we would like to present the role of the multi-actor platform in the UNICEFCO project, um, touch briefly on the principles of their operation within this project, um, speak about the experience of applying the multi-actor platform for socio-ecological systems, and this lo is looking at one of the particular, at the case study level, um, and then think about some of the key messages that are coming out of the evaluation process that we've been using with this multi-actor platform approach. This is some food for thought. We have our own questions about this multi-actor platform approach. I'm sure many of you have your own uh, questions. So these are just some things that you might consider as you're listening to us um, speak. So one question is, how is the multi-actor platform a relevant tool to help understand issues of agroecology? Another might be, is this platform a good means of producing new knowledge? And in what way is it useful? What place is given to the knowledge and know-how of local actors? What types of relationship between actors and researchers does this multi-actor system allow? And what experience or reflections do you have from your own involvement in multi-actor approaches for agroecology. So those are just some things to consider as you hear our talks. So let me turn now to the principles and operation of the multi-actor platform. So as I said, this is, uh, this is the uh, approach that we've taken with UNICEFCO. So this was a transdisciplinary multi-actor approach that was used to co-construct practice validated strategies and incentives for promoting agroecological approaches. The aim is to produce structured co-constructed strategies and policy instruments for delivering those public goods through economically viable farming systems. And the impacts sought were instrumental, so we wanted to influence the development of policy, practice, or services. We would like to increase the capacities and also to either strengthen or develop new, work, new networks. And I just want to pause for a moment here and just mention that all of the pictures that you're seeing in this particular portion of the presentation are from many of our um, multi-actor platform uh, activities.
So one of the things we thought about is, you know, who do you put together in this, in this multi-actor platform? So these were designed to be cross-boundary. We wanted to cross disciplines. We wanted to cross expertise. We wanted to cross roles. So thinking about uh, crossing disciplines, expertise, and roles, both within the academy as well as within non-academic organizations. And these multi-actor platforms form an integrative transdisciplinary framework. So it would be the upper right-hand quadrant of the diagram that is on this slide. So transdisciplinary and integrative. And seeking to strengthen the capacity of project partners as well as actors to, ass to assess the sustainability of agroecological farming systems. So thinking about really strengthening that capacity. And this is all about co-construction by actors. So we were bringing together, as I mentioned, lots of different um, actors as part of these multi-actor platforms. So farmers, value chain, policy team, agricultural advisors, researchers, thinking about all of the individuals who might be able to contribute something, some different perspective to this. Um, and it's all, it, was, it was also about knowledge exchange. So throughout all of the activities, thinking about how could there be um, fruitful knowledge exchange on site, in the field, peer to peer, and promoting best practice in research and practice. One of the things that is critical to be thinking about is who do you bring together? How do you identify the right people? Um, we thought about, uh, so we identified some criteria for selecting members. So that's the left-hand side of the slide here. So their interest, their availability, um, the representativeness, we were interested in getting that broad sense of voices around the table, uh, their willingness. Um, we also wanted to get um, a variety of uh, geographic locations, age range, and gender. On the right-hand side of the screen, um, we also wanted to think about what are those principles for operating? So when you bring people together, when you bring people together through this multi-actor platform, what are those principles for operating? So that's the kind of thinking about respect, sharing, listening, attention, teamwork, and ethics. A lot of what we did was underpinned, uh, the multi-actor platform was underpinned by principles from uh, research ethics. We were looking to build on existing relationships as well as develop new relationships. And critical to much of this is thinking about um, that degree of trust. Um, certainly within established relationships, there's often, uh, or existing relationships, there's often that established trust. And how do you build that new trust in those new relationships? We had multi-actor platforms at multi-levels. So we had a European Union level uh, multi-actor platform, and that was focused on the relevance of approaches and findings to EU and international policy and practice. At the local level, this is our case study level, we had 15 of these. These were focused on the national or regional or local policy and practice. And they really took into account the biophysical, political, and social contexts of that particular case study. We also uh, had a cross level. So this was trying to bring together the two different levels, thinking about how do we integrate across those levels. So this was our stakeholder reference group, which was drawing from both the European level and the local level multi-actor platforms. What are the actor roles? People coming to the multi-actor platforms play multiple roles. They may be beneficiaries, they may be innovators, they may be investors, and of course, any one individual may play multiple roles. The other thing that we were mindful of is the importance of thinking about the relationships between and among the actors. So power relationships between actors may be different in and out of their role within the UNICEFCO project um, multi-actor platform. 
one of the key functions of these multi-actor platforms was to really help co-develop that deep and rich understanding of farming systems. So bringing local knowledge, local understanding of farming systems, the transitions, and that was particularly important because we were working in so many different diverse areas. So there was a, a close working within, uh, within, with actors to understand the supply chains and networks that were present in the different contexts. This is just an example of some of the insight that um, was able to be gleaned from working uh, with the multi-actor platform. So this is an example of eliciting information from networks or about networks of the flows of knowledge between actors, uh, the flows of information and the flows of products. So on the left-hand side is kind of a, a social network analysis approach to understanding those flows of knowledge, information and products and some examples of how that might have been done. So a couple of kind of experience notes is the um, the recognition of the benefits of joint working and also the added value of strengthening networks between the actors. If we step back a little bit and think about what have we learned in terms of these uh, principles of operation um, and principles for the multi-actor platform, one of the things is the adherence to principles and best practice drawing from research ethics uh, contributed to creating outputs and impacts sought. Um, the other is time related. So these next two bullet points are really about the importance of taking the time and the time that is involved in identifying uh, suitable actors for that multi-actor platform and also in the recruitment. And here um, being transparent and clear about what it is that you want from the multi-actor platform and want from somebody's involvement is very important so that there's no surprises for them and there's no surprises for the project. There's also a need for shared understanding of those rules of engagement within the platform. So some of those principles of operation that I spoke about earlier that's something that we brought to each one of our activities is thinking about how do we develop that shared understanding of how we want to engage um, within this multi-actor platform. The other thing that we saw is not only was there a co-construction co of strategies about agroecology, but there was also this co-development of what is a multi-actor platform and there was a co development of the implementation of the multi-actor platform within the UNICEFCO project. So that it, in and of itself, we did with the actors and that contributed to developing uh, long-term relations and networks. And then I think the other thing, kind of a lessons learned is that the very operation of the multi-actor platform um, increases the shared capabilities of um, of members that are coming from policy, uh, practice, and, and science. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Emmanuel, to um, speak about the um, crossing scientific and stakeholder approaches. Emmanuel, I think you are still here and yes. we will see how our sharing of screen goes. I will turn mine off, but I will leave my voice open just in case I need to communicate something with you. Okay, thanks Kate. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will present you um, now uh, how a socio-ecological system has been used uh, in UNICEFCO's uh, project as means uh, of discussing uh, agroecological issues in local uh, stakeholders groups and uh, just for a reminder, uh, next slide please uh, Kate. Oops, as, as where a, did we go? As a reminder, uh, because Gerald uh, present, uh, present you this, uh, this um, uh, framework uh, this morning, but um, uh, socio-ecological system uh, aims at understanding how an action situation 
around a given sustainability uh, stake uh, is influenced by uh, the interaction of its different components, uh, social, economic, and, social and ecological aspects. And this approach has been formalized uh, in, in the form of a global system organized in subsystem, resource system, as you can see in the slide, uh, governance system, etc., internal and, and external uh, uh, system uh, interacting with uh, uh, the socio ecological system uh, um, fo fo focalized by uh, uh, around a focal action situation. Um, this approach, uh, um, this subsystem are uh, uh, divided in uh, a lot of variables and even sub variables that won't be detailed here. It's not the object, but uh, we have adapted uh, it uh, to answer the question of how agroecological orientation are implemented or not in a given system and why. Next slide, please, Yuket. And uh, here you see uh, the same uh, the, the same slide that uh, Gerald present, uh, uh, presented this morning. But um, I, ju uh, I just wanted to to say about uh, this aspect that um, we we tried uh, in, in Unicycle uh, project to, to to question the this third system, uh, in particular uh, the focal action situation at the center in red. Uh, in the sense of understanding what is happening in terms of agroecology issue, both in terms of practices and governance. Uh, when I say practices and how these practices are concrete impacts on resource management on, on the one hand, and uh, governance, and um, it's, uh, I mean uh, how these practices are linked to system of governance and production processing, because uh, uh, most uh, of a lot of uh, studies on uh, agroecological transition um, are done at local at, at farm level and uh, ne neglect um, it's, a bit, it's a bit strong as well but ne neglect a bit uh, local uh, local level and uh, food system level and that's the reason why we chose uh, the social ecological uh, system to approach the, this question. Next slide, please. So, um, uh, the use of a socio-ecological system has uh, allowed um, two levels of uh, knowledge. Uh, sustainability assessment on the one hand and uh, identification of drivers and barriers to agroecological transition on the other hand. As you see here, uh, uh, it was it enabled us to uh, have a standardized, standardized uh, overview of case study providing consistency uh, uh, in considering the multiple uh, interaction and drivers and it's particularly a qualitative assessment. Uh, the analysis of the SES revealed that many of the barriers, uh, uh, more other, uh, to the implementation of these agroecological practices were partly linked to the prob to problems of governance uh, between the public authorities and the representative of the sectors of value chain, of food chain on, on the one hand, and linked to the very condition of operation of the agricultural sector on the other hand, for instance. So uh, the identification of relationships uh, of the main barriers and drivers relating to subsystem is very important because it gave us the possibility to identify off-farm variables that influence on-farm practices. Next slide, please, Kate. So um, in the group, in the local group, in the multi uh, local, uh, in the local multi actor platform, uh, socio ecological system was used as um, uh, a matrix, um, a framework to to discuss on a certain kind, uh, certain point, certain certain important points, some important points that uh, SES framework analysis. Um, as, uh, as uh, pointed, as identified. 
and to go in depth in the multi actor platforms on these specific points. So um, it enable it enable to have a step by step discussion of the drivers uh, at different level and the, the barriers to 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 its uptake uh, with the local stakeholders and um, uh, it, we it allowed us to organize a collection in the in-depth knowledge of specific dynamics of the social ecological system in a local context because um, uh, what hackers do uh, what what stakeholders say uh, from one from one area to another is not the same for concerning their agroecological agro practices. It's not always possible to have a, a, a unique solution in agroecological solution. So um, this exchange uh, allowed us to compare uh, what are the practices uh, done uh, in each area. Um, and it gave us the possibility to structure the, uh, the development of vision of transition uh, toward agroecological practices. And um, at, the, uh, at the level of the, of the UNICEFCO team researcher, it helped us to create a common understanding of the farming system within and between the case study. It, uh, we will talk about, the, uh, about this if you want uh, uh, after. Next slide, please. So, um, what have brought social ecology, uh, ecological system framework, SES framework, uh, and what have brought uh, a multi actor platform uh, uh, to the, 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 the knowledge of agroecological transition? Um, SES framework uh, gave us uh, an external and expert knowledge. Uh, it gave us a system approach, uh, compa a comparative system approach between case studies with uh, identifying where are different drivers and barriers and to have an, um, a common idea of sustainability. Um, this is a, 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 an important point. Uh, but uh, it, this socio-ecological system framework doesn't give um, uh, the, the prior the priority to do uh, uh, to, and to develop uh, for uh, agroecological implementation. It's only given by multi-actor platform. Uh, on the, on the, in multi-actor platform, there is no, a, a specific knowledge from community of place and uh, of interest. Uh, it, there can be a prioritization of issues and action at farm level. Uh, at local level and at food system level. Uh, it, it's very important because um, what we identified with SES framework uh, is not prioritized. We, it's not possible to prioritize the, 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 the practice um, each, the, from another, uh, one practice from another. And multi actor platform can have the prioritization. So we can have a view of concrete dynamics of the uh, social uh, uh, ecological system in a, in a specific context. Uh, um, and we have a uh, multi actor platform can give a concrete steps uh, to foster uh, the take up of agro agroecological practices. It's very important aspect because um, the Crossing uh, SES framework and multi-actor platform help to, to, to identify relevant practices at different level and uh, help to assess the feasibility, the concrete feasibility of this action. This is something that SES framework cannot give alone, nor uh, MAP cannot give alone, neither. And it's, it's important to, to know that. So the crossing is very important. And uh, moreover, it, it, uh, it allows a dynamic to our agroecology uh, wished and managed by uh, local actors. So, uh, it, so, so crossing of these two approaches uh, can uh, has, a, has a, for instance, a, 
help uh, to, 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 to reflect, uh, to, 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 to think of new possibility of market, innovation on plots and launch of experiment with the researcher. Because the uh, agroecological practices are not uh, stabilized at the time. Next, uh, next slide, please, Kate. So I will conclude uh, on the on the fact that um, linking SES framework and multi-actor platform enables the creation of, of a vision of action plan based on a holistic and interdisciplinary analysis of drivers, barriers, and sustainability uh, sustainability action. Uh, discussion of, te of technical practices uh, are, nev are never um, separated from social aspects. And um, that's the reason why it is possible to identify a broad range of key factors important to the dynamics of, in, in terms of policies and regulation of governance of the specific, specific in charge of a product which forbid or not uh, this or one practice, etc. So we cannot uh, uh, have a, a, a clear view with, without uh, the multi-actor platform. So crossing SES framework and map uh, and it enables current coherence and reflection in the concrete modalities of action on how to make these different level can work together. It also shows that the implementation of uh, um, Agroecological practices must be carried out at several levels at the same time. And their efficiency, their efficiency depends to a large extent on this articulation. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, Alexandra, we turn the floor over to you and you can let me know when you want me to uh, Advance your slides. Thank you, Kate. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Alexandra Zbrignatopoulou from the Agricultural University of Athens. Um, this part of the presentation focuses on the um, evaluation process developed in uh, UNICEFCO, and I uh, will uh, present you some um, findings from the ex post evaluation. Next slide, please. The main objectives of the multi-actor engagement at the level of the case studies was to uh, interpret societal expectations using participatory process with uh, stakeholders and uh, end users, to engage end users in the process of uh, sustainability assessment, to empower them and uh, make them familiar with the use of uh, sustainability assessment tools. Next slide, please. We designed an uh, ongoing evaluation aiming to um, assess the performance of the multi-actor uh, platforms in uh, promoting co-learning and uh, capacity building of uh, key actors, focusing on the moments of uh, engagement and uh, interactions that we had uh, with the um, MAP members through the various uh, participatory events. And based on the feedback received, we tried uh, to adjust and improve our approach. Next uh, slide, please. On uh, top of that, at the final stages of the project, the evaluation process uh, was uh, complemented with an uh, exposed evaluation exercise, aiming uh, to determine the effect of uh, participatory project activities on uh, the capacities and uh, networks of uh, participants. At the um, case study level, project partners distributed questionnaires or uh, conducted uh, personal structured interviews with their local uh, MAP members who were uh, continuously involved in the project uh, activities, aiming to um, assess to what extent there are uh, changes in their uh, knowledge, their skills, and uh, as a result of their involvement. Next slide, please. So far, we have uh, received feedback from uh, 82 members of multi-actor platforms in uh, 12 
partner countries. And uh, it seems that we have a good balance between female and, uh, and male respondents. Next slide, please. And um, this table summarizes uh, the um, allocation of our respondents by categories of uh, key actors in each case study. Most of the uh, respondents are uh, scientists and uh, advisors, farmers, representatives of authorities and uh, administration, and uh, NGOs. Next slide. Thank you. The um, questionnaire comprised uh, eight questions. Four of them were uh, closed-ended, related uh, um, uh, to questions that are related to the dissemination and uh, discussion about UNICEFCO, the use of material, the respondents' participations in uh, other activities and uh, groups. And uh, we also encourage the um, respondents to add uh, further comments uh, against each question. Next slide. Based on the um, ex post uh, evaluation feedback, the majority of our respondents have uh, discussed the UNICEFCO project activities and the outcomes with their colleagues, other uh, experts, and their families. Half the respondents have used the resources provided to them in uh, order to communicate and inform others about issues related to their uh, professional activities. Some examples here are the use of uh, deliverables, story maps, and the social network analysis tools. More than uh, three quarters of uh, respondents have uh, participated at least in another meeting, activity, or campaign for sustainable agriculture. And so examples here are the event organized by the European Commission, the ACIS, the Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation Systems, and the Agroecology Forum. Around one in four respondents have become members at least of one new group, Network Partnership on Agroecological Farming Practices. Some examples are the working group for the CAP strategic planning, and the result-based uh, payments network. Next slide. Thank you. There were also four Likert scale questions asking uh, to what extent actors expanded their networks. They have learned uh, something new. They will use this new knowledge and uh, information and uh, whether an uh, attitude change has occurred. Next slide, please. Findings revealed that uh, more than half of uh, respondents have established communication links with persons for uh, sharing information and experience on uh, agroecology. Most uh, respondents feel that they have learned uh, something new about uh, agroecological issues. Um, such as the importance of analyzing the roles and influence of the various actors, the factors that encourage and uh, inhibit farmers from adopting agroecological practices, and uh, the results from the farm's assessments with the decision support tools. Around two-thirds of our respondents information and uh, knowledge acquired in their professional activities, uh, for instance, to uh, develop a territorial economic plan um, or in other uh, ongoing uh, project or as uh, inputs for the um, CAP strategic uh, plans. And the four in five respondents were already involved in uh, sustainable agriculture and uh, had a, a positive attitude towards um, agroecology. Next uh, slide, please. Some uh, lessons uh, learned from applying our uh, exposed evaluation exercise is uh, first one is that uh, engagement may create opportunities for uh, network building, interactions, and uh, information exchange with actors at the local level. But also, there were uh, cases 
uh, where actors felt that a uh, UNICEF project didn't generate practical solutions to local problems or uh, they were only involved in the provision of uh, information. Thus, considerable efforts are needed in order to create viable and uh, consistent content with actors' needs and uh, interests. Thank you very much for your attention. This is the end of the presentation. And uh, I hand it over to Kate to guide the discussion. Thank you very much, Alexandra. And I will turn it over to my colleague, Daniel, who has been monitoring the uh, flurry of chats coming in and will uh, kick us off here. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, so I'm gonna go chronologically from the start. Uh, first comment from Reinhold Staus, uh, who's a German stakeholder and monitor of the Sherpa map. Uh, stated, uh, mentioned the Interreg 4A, uh, Germany and UK uh, benefit for region results might be of interest. So there's a link for those that would like to take a look at it. Uh, Mariana Sigmund Schultz um, is asking, did you apply the SES framework in or with the people of the multi-stakeholder platform or were these two different activities that were then brought together in some way? Um, uh, it was two different and complementary, complementary activities. In some case, we used a, a CS framework as a background discussion framework to point out elements to be discussed with the groups, but not but SES framework was not necessarily as, uh, used as an explicit framework for exchange. Um, we work more on the issue to be developed from the result uh, that uh, were found by SES framework uh, upstream. Don't know if it's... One of the comments that you made, Emmanuel, in your talk, which I think is um, a nice way of thinking about these is um, the multi-actor platforms helped to prioritize. So this yes. is one of the ways that you described. So there is this socio-ecological system that has so many different variables and by working with the multi-actor platforms, um, they really helped kind of streamline, you could say, which are the variables that are most critical for that particular context. So. Mm -hmm. In, in, in that regard, you could see it as kind of two separate, but complementary, but very important to one another. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mariana, if that does not answer your question or you have further um, you know, reflections, feel free to just pop something in the chat. But hopefully that helps. Okay. Our next question comes from Alex Kutsuras. Uh, who is animating slash initiating the platforms and what kind of skills were required? I love that question, Alex. Mm -hmm. um, so in well, some regards, you could think of this as a researcher driven. So we were the ones per who were perhaps mm, not just researcher. So I'm gonna speak about the consortium because the UNICEF project itself was a transdisciplinary consortium. So it was a group of not just researchers, but also uh, non-academic organizations as well. So as a project, we were interested in putting together these platforms. So in that respect, you might say that we were the ones who were initiating. Um, it, Certain, uh, at the EU level as well as the um, uh, at the local level. Um, I don't know whether I've heard from case studies whether there were instances where once the multi-actor platform in, was in place, whether there were individuals who said, gee, that sounds kind of interesting, can I be involved? Um, in which case that would be uh, not the consortium initiating it, but other people kind of saying, I think I have something that I could contribute. So that would, I think, would be an interesting reflection across the case studies. In terms of skills, 
I think when when I think back on the the criteria that we developed, and um, you know, certainly Daniel and Alexander, you could uh, reflect on this as well. You were involved in some of the criteria development skills might be the kind of are they available to contribute is this something of interest um but in terms of a specific set of skills i'm not quite sure that i would say that there was a specific set of skills um that we were looking for it was more kind of interest availability um relation to agricult agroecology so I think that would be my kind of reflection on, on that answer. Uh, I mean that question. Um, others at the, others at the table on the screen here with me might have some reflections as well. I can say on behalf of BLO, um, the the skills we looked for was mainly, as Kate said, the interest, those uh, farmers, landowners, property owners who wanted to explore agroecology, and so that's where people became involved from our side. I'm uh, I'm laughing because um, Alex has clarified his question. He says, uh, "What are the skills that we might need as the initiators?" So not necessarily the skills of those who are uh, coming to the platform, but um, those us going and trying to uh, recruit people to join the multi-actor platform. Yeah. Um, facilitation skills are. A, a, a little needed to ensure that there is a, 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 a ample opportunity for stakeholders to express themselves. Uh, uh, we must accept that uh, there is not a, it's not a top-down uh, approach, but a bottom-up approach, uh, and uh, we must recognize that uh, stakeholders are their own knowledge, their own uh, know-how, and uh, that the researcher has to learn uh, from these st uh, local stakeholders. Uh, in our case, the, uh, our um, local group were uh, um, um, steered by us, uh, Isara, or by a local partner uh, coming from the development or by both person at the same time, both people at the same time, concretely. And we, 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 we tried uh, at each time uh, uh, to, to, to make them express their, their opinion, their, their concrete practices, their, their view the, and the, the out, their outlook on each stake, agroecological stake, uh, that emerged, that that were identified upstream with um, a socio-ecological uh, framework analysis. Concretely, we we did like this. Thank you very much. Uh, shall we move to the next question? We have quite yeah. a few questions this time. Yeah. Yeah, and we we need to have we have a hard stop on the hour to jump back into plenary. Uh, what Peter von Gossum, uh, What was the size of the platforms? How many meetings? Funny us. Was there a fallout? Which I'm not quite certain what the fallout is referencing, but I think Maybe that's. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Alexandra. Yes, um, the uh, size of the platforms uh, was uh, different in uh, its uh, case study. There were uh, cases where we have uh, only 10 members in uh, one uh, multi-actor platform and uh, another uh, multi-actor platform that uh, consisted, consisted of uh, 30 members. Uh, the multi-actor platforms uh, was uh, functioned like a, a poll of uh, individuals who, uh, depending on the activities that uh, we carry out uh, during uh, the project, we uh, interacted uh, with uh, specific uh, actors. 
So uh, there were certainly some uh, actors who uh, didn't interact uh, so many times. And uh, concerning the activities, I think that uh, there were uh, certainly five, uh, six events that carry out uh, with uh, participatory um, processes in all uh, partner countries. Thank you. Um, is there a live, uh, will the platforms continue after this project? Um, I believe so, but of course, someone could give a, a more detailed explanation of that. We hope so. <laughs> we hope so, but uh, it depends on the, on the, the wishes of our local stakeholders to go on, uh, initiated by, by this project. And um, it's not sure that uh, it will uh, go on uh, under this form, it can take another form. Don't know. Yeah, I think this this was a um, a question in the in the previous session of this is um, to what extent these will carry on. I think, you know, to some extent, the UNESCO project has been a focal point um, mm -hmm. for these groups of, of of actors to come together, and I'm including the consortium. Um, certainly, you know, one of the things that we heard from Alexandra's presentation and our own um, observations at, at each of the case study levels is that there have been um, linkages uh, that have been strengthened and new linkages that have been kind of generated as a result uh, among local stakeholders as a result of being involved in the multi-actor platform. So as Emmanuel says, to the extent that, that the individuals who have made these connections carry them forward, um, that is one of our sincere hopes, is that there will be a carrying forward. Um, but there is nothing formal in place to facilitate these um, groups of multi-actor platforms to kind of carry on. Wonderful. Uh, what were some of the reasons for participants to join the platform and aim of the platforms? What was their value they got from attending the platforms? I know from ELO's standpoint, it was education, learning about it, how best to um, work within the agroecological framework. I think uh, the, one of the, the first reason is to for, for for local actors, I speak for local actors, is to know where they are, uh, what they know and what they don't know about agroecological uh, practices, takes, uh, outlooks, uh, etc. Because they haven't not n n nobody has a, a clear vision of what's going on with. Uh, uh, with um, with agroecological practices and uh, what uh, they are uh, likely to do, how they, they, they have to, 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 to go to, go to um, they, they, they didn't have a clear vision. And um, multi-actor platform uh, allowed uh, to, to, to exchange uh, their vision and to know where, uh, what, uh, and, and how uh, that practices works in a, in a case or doesn't work in another case and why, etc., etc. It, it allows to, to have a confrontation between different experiences. And this, this is very, very important. And I think it was one of the first reasons to join this platform. I think this goes back a little bit to Alex's question. And Mariana, I appreciate the, the, the question. So Alex was asking, what are the skills that somebody who is initiating a multi-actor platform uh, needs to consider? Um, in some respects, each person who joins or says yes to join a multi-actor platform or be involved in something like this, they may have different motivations. You know, some people may be coming to it because they would like to learn a new skill, um, learn more about their farm. Uh, 
some people may be coming to it because they see it as an opportunity to meet other people uh, and uh, contribute to the decision making that is around their uh, livelihood. Um, so in, in some respects, there's a, there's a dialogue that happens at the very beginning when you, when, you, when you kind of initiate something, which is trying to understand, you know, what is important to this person and, and, and look and see whether there is an opportunity for that motivation, if you think about it that way, to be met. Um, and that goes back to one of the, the comments I made in my own talk is the importance of being clear about what it is that the involvement offers um, uh, so that somebody is coming in with clear expectations. We have about one minute left, Daniel. Yes, um, I guess I'll just read through the last questions. It looks like we're not gonna have time to answer them, but uh, Reinhold Strauss, uh, in benefit for region cases, uh, cases have been observed by researchers looking at the questions that we've mentioned. Uh, the approach in B4R came out of results of the bonus project miracle. Uh, there's papers in the link that are scientific results. Uh, Kate's comment. Uh, Peter explaining the participants who were leaving after some meetings was how he describes this fallout. Um, Reinhold Staus explaining that chaotic groups at the beginning have been the most successful. And Mariana's question, which unfortunately we won't have time to answer, is what are criteria of success for such platforms? So that'll be something we can think about and maybe if it can come up in tomorrow's discussions, we'll see. Yeah, great questions. And thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for the discussion.